lovely to see you. I can see, I think most of you are smiling at me. Um, I don't think anybody is scowling, but as far as I can tell, I think you are all smiling. It's a real blessing just to be able to chat to some, I'll try and chat to some of the others before you go, as people were gathering. And I can see some very delighted people because they've had their hair cut. That's absolutely awesome. Please, folks, folks, uh, if you haven't had your hair cut, please don't feel jealous. Hope it will, your time will come. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed the, the funnies on the, on the board, um, which included something about a prayer cut. Mm. There we are. That's the quality of humour that we're used to at Churchill Owl Saints and Winscombe. Well, bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. And also a warm welcome to those joining us online. God bless you. You are very much welcome to this service. Um, and those who join us online, it's our privilege and our delight to be able to worship with you. If you are joining us online, there is a service order on our website, which is www.windsandchurches.org.uk, which you can download and follow along with some of the responses. But for all of us gathered here, please do join in the responses, which will be on screen as usual. And as usual, remain seated for the hymns. Please don't sing, uh, but do enjoy the words and the music. A little reminder there, you've seen that before. All the chairs are set up for social distancing. If you want to chat with folk at the end, that's fantastic, but please do it outside in the fresh air. That would be wonderful. Okay, I'm just going to pause for a moment as we gather in prayer as we come through, come before our Lord, our Saviour, our hope, and our Redeemer. And we do that as three churches plus the good folk joining us online as well. So let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can gather on this beautiful spring morning. It reminds us of that very first Easter when you rose again. And so we pray that the risen Christ might we meet with us today, individually and corporately, whether we're worshipping online or whether we're joining in purpose or joining in person. We come before you as your people to worship you. Amen. Let's begin with our Easter response. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Praise the Lord. Well, we look towards the risen Christ now. I'm going to pray for the family and friends of His Royal Highness Prince Philip. So let's just bow our heads in prayer as we pray a special prayer for the royal family and the friends. God of our lives, we give you thanks for the life of Prince Philip, for his devotion to duty. We entrust him now to your love and mercy through our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Merciful God, be with all those who mourn, especially the Queen and all members of the Royal Family. We pray today, as this community of faith in Winscombe, Sanford and Churchill, we pray that they might know the hope of your promises and the comfort of your everlasting love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our first hymn reminds us of the peace of given to his followers who gathered at Easter. It is when I receive the peace of Christ, and although the music group aren't playing today, they are singing for us differently in our first hymn. My loneliness shall end And I must reach a hand and take My brother as a friend My brother as a friend indeed Who has an honoured place Where he may stand before the Lord In dignity and grace I receive the peace of Christ My loneliness shall end reach a hand and take my sister as a friend. My 
My sister has a friend indeed Who has an honoured place Where she may stand before the Lord In dignity and grace When I receive the peace of Christ My loneliness shall end And I must reach a hand And take my own self as a friend my own self as a friend indeed Who has an honoured place Where I may stand before the Lord In dignity and grace When I receive the peace of Christ My loneliness shall end And I must reach a hand And take Christ Jesus as a friend Christ Jesus as a friend indeed Who has an honoured And this is our time of confession, our moments where we reflect back on moments of the last day, the last week, the last month. <coughs> we call to mind before the Lord those moments we know in our hearts we need to bring before him. There's things we've said or done that have impacted negativity, negatively on others. Actions we could have done differently. In hope and in faith, we make our confession together, knowing that the God we serve is faithful and forgiving. So please join with me in the words of the confession which are on your screen. We pray together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And now may Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all his goodness, keeping you in life eternal. Amen. And the comment for the third Sunday of Easter. Risen Christ, you filled your disciples with boldness and with fresh hope. Strengthen us this day to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. We come to our Bible reading, which today is from the lectionary, in the book of Luke, the Gospel of St. Luke, beginning at chapter 24, verse 36. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself, touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it, because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? And so they gave him a piece of broiled fish. And he took it and ate it in their presence and said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law and the prophets and the Psalms. And he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. 
Christmas music a lot. Our next hymn links our spring season with Easter in a beautiful um, Easter carol. This is sung by St. Martin in the fields. when even the small things in life don't seem to be going your way. I seem to have had a few of those uh, recently. Um, just this morning I was saying to, to Jean, actually, we were chatting earlier on before the service um, arrived, and she asked me how the dog was. Um, and uh, I said, well, actually, you woke me, up, woke me up at 10 to 6 this morning. It's the hour change. They don't really understand. So he wanted to go out. So he, Yes, so that was, uh, that, that, that was great. Uh, nice to be out and see the, the sunrise as we walked along the strawberry line. Uh, and Jean said, well, I've been up earlier than you. I was awake at 4 a.m., so I kind of feel a little bit better. But the dog was also responsible for another one of these incidents in the week um, that I just thought I'd share with you. This is just a little illustration to show you um, when you think life is kind of going away and then little events happen that make you remind, remind you of how, uh, how fascinating life can be. Um, my wife and I were chatting in the week, we do occasionally chat in the week, and uh, the, the post went, and I might have mentioned to you before that you know, the postman sort of comes, uh, and our little dog Diggory's is only tiny, but his bark sort of implies he's almost like a Rottweiler size. So the, the post person drops it, the letters through the letterbox and then quickly makes a dash for it before the hand of the Baskervilles sort of comes out. Um, but for whatever reason, we didn't notice the letters being dropped, and we carried on chatting, but we did then notice the dog barking, and then went very silent. So just like with young children, if they go silent, that's the moment. You know it, don't you? Parents, grandparents, that's the moment where you rock out to check things out. And sure enough, I've been expecting a new passport. And the mail had been delivered, and there was the dog making a snack out of one of the more important items. <laughs> the 
there he is, the culprit. I, 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 what, what I sort of marvel at is his sort of guilty expression. Uh, and it's sort of an expression mix of penitence and plea. Uh, and he, he kind of knows he's going to get away with it when he pulls that face. And he, you kind of got to, got to forgive him. Well, yeah, <laughs> maybe you did sign for it, but actually that one, uh, well, I don't want to cast an aspersion, I'm not going to go any further on that. Um, well, in our Gospel reading today, we meet a group of people, not just one, where both the small things and the very big things just aren't going their way. And they are, of course, Jesus' disciples. And there are three things that the risen Christ does not test to them to give them assurance in a time difficulty. And I think that's important for us as a community of faith of three churches. He does that to his newly regathered disciples. I'll think a bit more about that in a moment. But it just seems to me we are newly regathering, aren't we folks? So maybe there's something in our gospel reading straight from today's lectionary for Easter 3. But let me offer just a little bit of context to begin with. Although we are in Easter Three, third Sunday of Easter, our Bible reading in today's lectionary records events that happened on Easter Sunday. So there's a slight disconnect with where we are with the events that are recorded in the Bible we pick them up today. And when we pick up that narrative from Luke 24, we have to understand where it occurs because it, it occurs straight after the two disciples who are on the Emmaus Road have met Jesus. But to remember that Bible account, two disciples after the crucifixion on their way to Emmaus, which I think was about seven miles from Jerusalem, and a man draws alongside them and they explain to him all the things that have happened to Jesus. And he explains to them how that needed to happen because he links it with the Old Testament, which was kind of their Bible at the time. And they, he sort of makes, makes out that he's gonna go ahead and they invite him to stay as he breaks bread, they realize, they realize it's the risen Christ. Well, that's the story I think most of us know well. But have you ever wondered what happened next? Well, just three verses before today's lecture of reading, it actually tells us. Let me just read you this. Uh, this is verse 33 to 36 of Luke 24. And it says this. Remember, Jesus has just broken the bread. He's shared communion with them. They've realized who he is and he's been taken from their sight. This is what happens next. They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven, and those with them assembled together and saying, It's true, the Lord has risen and appeared to Simon. And the two told what had happened on the way. And by that way, they mean the way to Emmaus, and how Jesus was recognized by them as he broke bread. So they kind of settled in for the night, if you remember, and suddenly they think, We've got to get out, we've got to get back to Jerusalem and walk all the way back in the dark, as it probably was, to tell the others about it. And so we find them gathered with the others, having told of their encounter on the Emmaus Road. And I want us to consider the frame of mind the people they're explaining these events to in Jerusalem. Because those other people hadn't had the benefit they had, they'd seen their Lord crucified and tortured. And they even locked the doors because they're fearful of the authorities. They, they think the authority is going to catch up with them just like they did with Jesus and maybe put them to death like they did with the Lord. And then on the other hand, they've heard the joyful reports of some, like these two who just rocked up, and Mary, who claim they've met the risen Christ seems to me they're in a place of fear for themselves and for their future, for their safety and their sanity. Then Jesus himself appears, and you can see on this ancient icon a depiction of that. And verse 37 tells us these disciples were startled and frightened. What does Jesus say to them? He says, peace be with you. And in those words, he gives the assurance of hope, the offer of acceptance, even though they 
have this disconnect about where they were with their own faith and gives them a sense of joyful reunion and reformation. And I feel there's a bit like that for us today, for me seeing you all and us gathering at Easter last week and the week before. There is a sense of joyful regathering and reformation. We, part of the reason we feel that joy is because it's through the lasting and gentle peace that only the Lord Jesus Christ can give. I do like looking at the different translations of the Bible. For me, the New Revised Standard Version captures, for me, the spirit of those disciples gathered. In verse 41, it says, In their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. In their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. Isn't that a great reflection of human faith? Perhaps those first century Christians weren't so different from our 21st century Christianity. Overwhelmed by joy, but still in the presence of doubt. And the risen Christ invites them to see and touch his hands. I don't know if you can see that on the icon there. To see and touch his hands, to confirm that he's not an apparition or a mass hallucination. And when they're still not quite able to take it in, he says, well, have you got anything to eat? And they say, oh, a piece of boiled, broiled fish now. Can you spot the fish on there? Can you see the fish on that icon? Some of you may have noticed it already. Uh, and give the game away there, it is just a market. So broiled fish would have been quite common. And that's a bit like if Jesus turned up right now and said, it's me. Let me have something to eat. What might we, what might well, the modern equivalent of broiled fish, something readily available? Something that everybody ate. <laughs> the mushy peas. Have we got the mushy? Yes, we have the mushy peas. Well done, those of you who like mushy peas. It seems to me the boiled fish reminds us that Jesus is asking for a down to earth real faith, an honest faith where hope and overwhelming joy and peace mix with a liberal seasoning of doubt. That's the first point. But there's significance for me in what Jesus goes on to say in verse 44. He says this, This is what I told you when I was still with you, that everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. So that was their Bible. That was their, that was their holy book that they were used to. They didn't have the New Testament. The New Testament was being written in their very presence, or perhaps they didn't realise that at the time, they probably didn't. So what is he doing when he's kind of calling them back to the scriptures that they knew? And it seems to me he's joining up his past with their present and future. He's illustrating in the fulfilment of prophecy the scriptures they knew. He's giving them He's given their story, a new chapter, just when they thought it had finished as a tragedy. He's also doing something else. He's giving them a, a sense of purpose, a sense of direction and meaning. He's helping them to realise by giving them this narrative of what's happened before to all their forefathers and himself, he's reminding them that they've got a part to play in a bigger story, which is the grand narrative of God's enduring and overwhelming love for humanity and the planet. I think he's also given the inspiration for Hebrews 13, 8, which is Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. So he sets their faith and doubt in a real context. And then he gently challenges them. Because he goes on to explain the mission ahead. The message of repentance and forgiveness of sins, this is verse 48, is to be shared with all nations beginning in Jerusalem. And that's right where they are, remember. But who's going to do it? Well, verse 48 tells us, you are my witnesses, Jesus says. You are my witnesses. His followers, he's saying to them, look, it didn't end as a, tra a tragedy. There's a new chapter beginning. You're the key players with me. This is 
from the Gospel of Luke. And St. Luke literally does go on to, to pen a kind of second gospel. We've got it there. It's called the Book of Acts. It's written by Dr. Luke, St. Luke, and explains what happens next. It explains about the coming of the Holy Spirit and God's love going out to surrounding generations. And it's written partly from a first-person perspective because Dr. Luke was there through parts of it. So it's a really exciting read, I won't go in it today. But where does that leave us then on the third Sunday of Easter? Let me sort of wrap things up. Perhaps we feel like that gathered 11. We feel the small things or the big things or combination of them both, not just passports, have not gone our way, perhaps especially through the pandemic. Perhaps we feel fearful for the future, anxious about what's happening next, and even wondering about our safety. Well, I want to say to you, if you're in that place this morning, the Lord understands, and we can hear afresh, we need to hear afresh those words of comfort that he spoke. Peace be with you. It's the gentle assurance of enduring hope in the presence of doubt. Some time ago, a website was launched in the USA that claimed to offer tickets to heaven the cost of each ticket was in the thousands, as you might expect. I mean, come on, this is uh, America. Each ticket, each ticket came with a money back guarantee. <laughs> now, when challenged on the authenticity of the guarantee, the website owner allegedly responded, well, no one's ever come back to claim it. <laughs> Rather than false website promises, in the risen Christ we can have hope for the future that endures despite our, despite our moment of human doubts. And it's in these times we need to be reminded, like all of the disciples, of the sheer sense of meaning and purpose and joy that only the risen Christ can give. That our, our lives can have that direction and purpose in the world that where there's the overwhelming counter-narrative is survival of the fittest. Christ calls us to bring his enduring love to those around us, whether that's praying, giving, going, serving, forgiving, loving, reconciling. Where does he call us to do that from? Perhaps not star, where that <laughs> this man came from. That's not to say that the Lord doesn't love Star, of course he does, just as much as does. That's the benefit of Google Maps. Star is a very nice place, Don must. I've been there, we did a little walk around there. Um, but I just wanted to say, where does he ask us? That's his people in Winscombe, Sanford, and Churchill, which are all on that map there. Where does he ask us to begin? Where did he ask his disciples to begin? He talked about the love going out to nations, beginning in Jerusalem. In, in other words, he was saying, look, start where you are, you're gathered in Jerusalem. The risen Christ calls each of us, as part of this community, to reach out and put the love of Christ back into the heart of our community. Winscombe, Sanford, and Churchill. Okay, we come to our words of hope and faith in the form of our creed. So we're going to uh, proclaim this confidently together, but also maybe like those first disciples, with a gentle seasoning of doubt. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a slave. He was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Going to have a time of prayer, I'm going to ask Richard to come and join me at the front and lead us in prayer. Thank you, Richard. Thank 
surprised there isn't a massive number of people pleading with my wife to be put on the intercessions rotor. The reason being you get to take these ghastly masks off and breathe fresh air for a second. <laughs> Having said that, uh, if you offer to do the intercessions, you must be prepared for the vicar to lay little traps in your way. <laughs> said to me, I always take a briefing from him early in the week um, for him to tell me things that are important, important to bring to our prayers. He said, you must not forget that we need to pray for the Duke of Edinburgh's soul and for the Queen. And so I did a nice paragraph about it and guess what he did straight away this morning when he started the service? He prayed for the Duke of Edinburgh and the Queen. So I think dismissed the first one. Let us pray. Today we are reminded that following his resurrection, Jesus appeared to his disciples in various situations and to various ends and effects. We pray that our Queen finds Jesus comforting her in her hour of need too. Almighty God, loving Heavenly Father, we come before you today in faith and trusting in you. Over the years of our lives, you have nurtured this faith and helped it to grow, small as it is. We thank you for those who inspire us, especially our Queen, Defender of the Faith, whose own faith has given us, her subjects, confidence to carry on in your ways when we ourselves felt unfit and unworthy of your love. We marvel at our Queen's stoic nature in carrying out her own husband's known adage just to get on with it. And we commend her to your care and protection as she gets on with it without the love of her life by her side. May she and we this day, find you standing by us, risen, ascended, glorified. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of your church in this country, and in particular for those ministering to us here, that you will appear to them with a vision of your mission in our villages. Help us to work with Andrew, our retired clergy, our lay readers, our lay ministry team, and our PCCs to roll out this vision and make it work for your glory and the extension of your kingdom in this place. Bless, we pray, the APCMs scheduled for late May, that at that time those you need will feel called to serve as members of the new PCCs and in positions of office. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for the hungry, the destitute, and the oppressed of this world. We hear Jesus' words. If your brother asks for bread, will you give him a stone? consider our own failings in making more of an effort to relieve hunger at home and abroad. We see the unrest in various countries and consider our own failings to uphold law and order and to send aid to those in serious distress. We pray for peace and understanding in the United States as unrest threatens to boil over due to the breakdown in relationships between law enforcement officers and the public at large. And we pray for relief from a turbulent and deadly civil war in the Yemen, where thousands of innocent children are suffering from malnutrition, as well as injuries brought upon, brought upon them by deadly crossfire. Father, inspire peace, peacemakers to intervene, to bring an end to suffering. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, we pray for those who feel hated, insulted, or cut off from society in general. 
they may be as close to us as here, in Winscombe, Sanford and Churchill. But we haven't noticed it. Grant us big hearts to reach out to those who are our neighbours, to lend a hand or an ear for their benefit. Help us to always include the marginalised in our thoughts and conversations, creating a more inclusive society and giving hope to those in despair. It is a broken and increasingly secular society in which we live, and the rejection of those in need is easy to see and hard to remedy. Show us, good Lord, the ways in which we can make a difference, even if we are far from the seat of power, feel helpless to be catalysts for change. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Dear Lord, sorrow is all around us at this time. We pray for the staff of our health system after 12 months of fighting the pandemic. Though they are drained, Lord Jesus, be their source of inner strength. And inspire our government to restore their self-respect to reward their selfless efforts with a pay that reflects their value to society. We thank you for the vaccination programme in this country, which is restoring confidence to our people. But we pray for those countries who are less fortunate, due to poverty or poor administration, and still await adequate quantities of vaccine. There is sorrow too, Lord, and many families as they see loved ones fall ill and suffer. We pray now in earnest for those of our number for whom health is an issue and for whom we now pray for healing. We name before you Bishop Peter, Liz Elkins, Tim Walton, Jeff Norton, giving thanks for his successful cataract option operation this week. Pray for Sarah B, James, Celia Hine, Pauline K, David, Jackie Bravery, Jim McGear, Myra Burrows, Pat Gray, Pippa Cobden Ramsey, Katie Brookman, Russ A, Rachel. Ken Martin, up in Norfolk, remembered still by our standing. Nigel J, Neil A, Miriam Taylor, and Jean Morrissey, and also Joan Terry, who have had falls in Dunstercourt recently. And also for those known only to ourselves to you, Lord, and for all the people who love them, may they feel your arms of healing around them today, and be with those who tend them and seek to cure them, as well as their families, for whom this time is tense and their confidence is low. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. In faith, Lord, we pray for those who have recently died. In the wake of Prince Philip's own death, we remember the families and friends of all those who have died in the past year and for whom there has been no chance for a proper final farewell. As we saw our dear Queen sitting alone yesterday during the service, we bring before you all those who have sat alone directly or indirectly as a result of the COVID pandemic. And as many still sit on their own. Pray for those offering comfort to the bereaved, and for the right words for us when we too must be those who comfort the mourners. May the good memories of lost loved ones serve to soften their grief and bring them to a place of peace and calm. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And finally, the prayer on our newsletter this week. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, 
give us such knowledge of his presence with us that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life and serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. I don't know which part you missed out in those prayers, but they were great. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, folks, we're just going to carry on praying in the form of the Lord's Prayer. We join in this prayer together. We pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn reminds us of the words of Jesus that inspired Hebrews 13, 8, yesterday, today, and for.
we come to the blessing, I'm going to invite you to stand and I will pray God's blessing on you and of course those who join us online. May the risen Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope, new future, fill you with his risen life. God, who is the same yesterday, today and forever, gladden your hearts and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always.